All right. All right, Coach. I'm, I'm glad to be here with you today. I'm so glad yeah, to be here. Glad, I'm so glad to be here. I want to tell you that, and I already talked to you a little bit about it. My family is from Alabama. I was the first to be born. Where, where from? Um, they're from Dothan and yeah. Headland. So oh, they're sure. in southeast Alabama. I was the first to be born here. My dad was actually um, all state uh, for Dothan High oh, and good. tried a few practices with Bear Bryant and yeah. didn't work out. Yeah. So he went to Troy yeah. and then came here and started working for FHP and was on the sidelines down there with you. So well, I got good. to grow up That's during great. the Danny McManus, Sammy Smith days. Yeah. Those were the fun days. Though. Oh, Those yeah. were so awesome. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, so, you know, I was there as a child and I got to watch it. And so I've always been a diehard FSU fan. I remember there was, I can't remember what year it was. It was the FSU UF game. Uh, we lost 17 to 13 and it was pouring down rain. It was like flooding. I don't yeah. know if you remember that game. That was one of the first I remember. No, I can't remember that. I, I don't remember playing them in the rain real but it was Florida. It was Florida. Florida. Uh huh. It was Florida. And I remember it was pouring down rain. So oh, <laughs> metal bleachers and well, that was oh, yeah. the end zones didn't look like that then. So, um, and then when you left, I cried. I was, right? it, <laughs> you were FSU to me. So, um, and we have a new coach, Coach Taggart. Yep. Um, and uh, this is the first time I kind of feel like the old FSU is back. Yeah. I kind of feel yeah. like that fire is back. That's good. No, that's good. Yeah. Do you feel that way too? Uh, I hadn't thought of it in that term, mm -hmm. but uh, I like what I see, by the way. Yeah, I do, too. I do, too. I think there's a lot of um, fun stuff. Well, let's start there. Those early days. What What is your favorite memory from those early games when you first started at FSU? Well, the, 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 the good memories, you know, when I came here, I think they were 4-23 in the, last, the previous three years. And so the, the thing I like the most is we, we, we built it up. Our second year, we won 10 and went to a bowl and won a bowl. Yeah. Then after that, gosh, we went, we went to about 30-something bowls. Yeah, a whole bunch of them. Oh, Actually, yeah. And we set the record when and Coach Higgins got to maintain it last year. That was oh, really yeah. cool. Gosh. I was there. That was awesome. I was glad to see him do that. Oh, that was awesome. I know. I know you have such a good relationship with him. And I know there were some painful losses, too. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. The Miami kick games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, it's funny how the, the big series in the nation uh -huh. was Florida State and Miami in the late 80s. Yes. You know? And then, then Spurrier came to Florida then it became Florida, Florida State. It's always a one versus two or one versus four because one of us would be number one. Yes. And uh, But the Miami series, we lost so many on a missed field goal. Oh, missed you know what? Goal. And uh, I, think, I think we finally beat them when they missed one. Yes, we finally did. Those, those were some painful games. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But it always came down to that final play, I remember. So, I mean, what was... What did, is there a, a game that sticks out to you the most that hurt the most back then with with Miami? The game that hurt the most wasn't at Florida State it was when I was at West Virginia. Yeah, you know you, you look back and I coached fifty seven years mm -hmm. college football. Mm -hmm. I was at West Virginia. I was at Sanford University. I was at South Georgia College, and I was here for thirty four years. But there was one game that was the darkest day of my life as far as a coach is concerned. When we played Pittsburgh, I was at West Virginia, and that was a big rival, Pittsburgh. You're only 60 miles up the road. Yeah. You know, we had a big halftime lead and got beat, and it liked to drove me crazy. Oh, I know. Those, those second half, uh, that's, that's bad. Well, tell me what your favorite part was about coaching. I mean, you coached that many years. What was your favorite part about it? Well, the, the, the favorite part was uh, watching another team film and trying to find out how to beat them, you know it, mm -hmm. and uh, how to attack them and look for weaknesses and things like that. And then you go out into the ball game and maybe your plan worked perfect, mm -hmm. you know, or you might have gone out there and in the first series you see it's not going to work, you got to go something else. Mm -hmm. So it's very challenging, you know, mm -hmm. and if you lose, it is no fun. Not fun. <laughs> None. <laughs> no fun. I remember. <laughs> now, my family in Alabama kept threatening me the whole time you were here that they were going to take you from us. Yeah. <laughs> how, tell me how close they really got to getting you from Florida State. They, they, they would have only had to ask me back in 87. Uh -huh. We were playing in Birmingham. That's my home. Mm -hmm. And the coach at Alabama resigned. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody, everybody there said, Bob, we want Bobby Bowden. 
I mean, the governor called me. A lot of the big boosters called me. And, uh, and I'd got rumor that the president was going to want, want to talk to me. Mm. I had told them, I don't want to talk to him unless he's going to offer me a job. Now, if he's going to offer me a job, I'll talk to him. But I got a good job. I'm not looking for a job. You know what? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, they, 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 they did interview me. The president did interview me. But he didn't offer me the job. He offered it to somebody else, which is fine. And uh, as soon as I saw he wanted to offer it to me, I got, got out of it. But four years later, when that coach left, mm -hmm. they did offer me the job. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I felt like I was too old to go back. It was like going home. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first time, if 87 that I offered it, I would have, I would have gone definitely because it was home. Yeah. I felt like I was being called home, you mm -hmm. know. But I didn't get it. No, well, then the next time they offered me, I felt like I was too old to be changing jobs. Yeah. You know, I stayed here. And, you know, that's when we put 14 years in a row back to back mm -hmm. in the top four or five in yep. the nation. You know, oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm I know you were probably you lived through some of that. I did. I know you're probably upset they didn't offer you the job, but I'm kind of happy they didn't. So. <laughs> well, I, you know, I'm a, I believe in God mm -hmm. and I believe God, to re you know, in my coaching career, I coached 57 years. Mm -hmm. I had six jobs. Mm -hmm. I didn't apply for one of them. You know, usually you have to apply for a job to get it. No, they called me and said, we want you. Would you be interested? So I interviewed and took the job, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I did apply for some jobs I didn't get, but I, it was the answer to prayer to me because I would ask God to lead me, lead me. Is this what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to do? But he, he took care of me. He, he always does. <laughs> and that, that's honestly, um, that was my next question was, your faith is so inspiring and moving and it's influenced so many lives on the field, your books, your documentary. Tell me why you love Jesus. Well, you know, you, know, you, you talk to a lot of different people. When, when did you become a Christian? Oh, when I was 12, I did this. Oh, when I was 20. Or, no, I was 30 before I ever. Well, I can never remember not knowing about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, I credit that to my family. My mother and daddy were Christian people. Mm -hmm. So they took me and my sister to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday. You know, mm -hmm. every time those doors opened, old Bobby was there. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so I was taught about Jesus, you know. So I've always known about him. Now, I didn't, ex it's funny like this, when I was about 12, I went down to the, in the front of my church and made a public commitment mm -hmm. that I wanted to join the church and be saved. Mm -hmm. And so I thought after that, I was, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you know. Mm -hmm. I finally realized I wasn't okay, you mm -hmm. know it. And I was 23 years old. Mm -hmm. I found out I was saved by grace. Mm -hmm. There was not a darn thing I could do except my faith, you know what? Mm -hmm. And so really, I was, I was 23 before I really knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, But as far as knowing Jesus, I've known him all my life. Yeah, I think that happens because I was raised in the Baptist churches in Alabama. My granddaddy yeah. was a pastor there. And oh, really? It was a lot of the book of Revelation <laughs> yeah. first. And yeah. then I didn't really understand uh, the relationship aspect with him until I got older. And then I kind of figured it out. Yeah. It was about yeah. relationship yeah. with him. And you, and you have to do it. Somebody can't do it for you. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. That's so true. That is absolutely true. Well, and, and you've never been ashamed to state your faith. And you've led a lot of people to Christ, including Coach Martin. Rick, um, oh, yeah. yeah, who's, who's um, being one of those. How does that feel? Oh, it makes you feel good. You know, uh, it's, uh, it's funny when he accepted Christ in my office, when I explained what he had to do to be saved. It's funny. He came to see me. He wanted want to know what the heck was I talking about because I just talked to our team. Pablo Lopez mm -hmm. got killed. And so I witnessed to my team you know, about eternal life and you better be ready. And what if that was you? Where would you be today? And things just kind of. And so then Mark was sitting in there as a young coach and he didn't know all that. Mm -hmm. So he came by my office, won't know what that was all about. Mm -hmm. I had mother's Bible on my desk. She died. Mm -hmm. I had her Bible and I took the Bible and showed him how to be saved. Mm -hmm. how God said to be saved. Mm -hmm. And he accepted Christ right there in my office and is a wonderful Christian man, mm -hmm. one of the strongest Christian men I've ever known, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so, anyway, but I'm, yeah, I'm, uh, I've always felt like one of my teaching points to other people, you know, especially, you know, I love to talk to young people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, teenagers, or even high school 
middle-aged kids because they're so impressionable. And, and you know what? They're not getting in the home anymore. Mm -hmm. That's just like you were raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a Christian home. That's all we knew. Mm -hmm. Listen, half the kids I coached didn't even have any, they didn't even have a home. You know what? Yeah. It, Papa was missing, or mother was missing, or both of them were missing, and uh, and and so where are they going to get it? Where are they going to get it? Well, people like you and I got to spread the word. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what God wants. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. That's and share our testimony. Well, speaking of Coach Rick, he is such a wonderful Christian man, and I, I keep up with him, and I've forgiven him that he's at Miami now. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, but I'll, I know you love him, you know, yeah. so much. What are your thoughts on him transitioning to our old rival from the SEC? I think it's good for him. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he left us and went to the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, coached there for 10 or 12 years. Did, uh, did an excellent job, mm -hmm. but they, they're never happy unless you won a national championship. Right. So he leaves there and comes to the University of Miami. Well, that's where he's from. Mm -hmm. That's where he did his undergraduate work, mm -hmm. you know. I tried to recruit him when he was in high school, but he chose to go to Miami. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, but, but now he's down there. He, he has done a great job, mm -hmm. and it showed last year against Florida State when they won in the last second. Mm -hmm. They could have lost just as easy as they won, mm -hmm. but they won and he's recruiting well mm -hmm. and I imagine they're going to do real good. It's going to be a battle. Now, well, Florida, Florida State and Miami, I think Florida and Miami are going to finally get decent again. They haven't <laughs> had been decent in the last Not. six, seven, eight years, but right. I think they're both fixing to get well yeah. and Florida State's going to have to really be at their top to beat them. Yeah. Uh, probably so. I think we got some tough games coming up in oh, that. Yeah. I really do. Well, tell me about your family and the coaching years. I know you're a father and a husband at home, but you also, like you said, you became a father to a whole bunch of kids oh, too yeah. Oh, um, yeah. through coaching. How did you balance all that? Well, you got you got to. It's like I talk when I talk to other young men. You've got to get your priorities in order. Mm -hmm. You've got to get your priorities. Last night I spoke over in Live Oak. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. I told those, I spoke to a lot of young high school football players. I said, man, you got to get your, your priorities in order. And number one's got to be God. Mm -hmm. I said, number two, your family. Mm -hmm. Number three, uh, your education, mm -hmm. not football. Right. You know, I said, somewhere down there, football mm -hmm. comes in or athletics, whatever you're playing, mm -hmm. you know, but you've got to put God first. Now, what do I mean by putting God first? This is what I told those boys. Don't do anything. If you don't think God wants you to do it, don't do it. <laughs> now, if you think God don't mind you doing that, well, go do it. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's putting him first, you know. Yeah. And then check it. Do your parents mind? Do your parents mind you going out with those guys Saturday night? Mm -hmm. Mama don't want you to. Don't go. <laughs> See? Mama says it's okay. Go, you know. <laughs> so get your priorities in order. Mm -hmm. But don't make football your number one priority mm -hmm. because it won't last and you ain't going to win all your games. That's true. That is very, very true. That's, salt, that's sound advice. Well, when you, I'm going to say this, and your sons became coaches, yeah. and you had to play them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How was that? I remember those games. How was that for you? It was It was fun at first, mm -hmm. and then Anna and I, Aunt, my wife couldn't stand it. Yeah. Because one of us fixing to get beat. <laughs> now, now me and Jeffrey, my son, uh -huh. coached Florida State. Uh-huh. Tommy and my son-in-law, Jack, Robin's husband, mm -hmm. coached Clemson. Mm -hmm. Now, one of us is going to get beat. <laughs> and <laughs> Ann didn't like it. She wants to win every dadgum game. You know what? And, uh, but it was kind of fun. I, I think we got, the, we got the best. We played nine times. We got the best of them five. They got the best of us four. Mm -hmm. You know? So it was pretty good. It was a great series. The year we won the national championship, mm -hmm. we beat them by three points at their place. Uh, and and we won a nice little chat. That was the only close game we had that year. Everybody else we handled pretty good. Yeah, well, yeah. That was, that was that, old Tommy. That was Tommy. <laughs> I was big fans of them too. I had, oh yeah. I had to cheer for Clemson and Auburn when they weren't playing us. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna be honest. When you retired, it felt like everything changed for many of us fans. I was I was really upset. I did. It, it oh, you mean when like, I left? Yes. Yeah. I cried. And my Alabama family had come in town to watch the game with me because they knew it was like a very special. And I cried. And I'm like, I can't believe he's gone. <laughs> um, how did that change you leaving? 
FSU. Well, I didn't want to leave. Right. But I didn't want but one more year. I was getting to, I was 80. Mm -hmm. I was already 80. Mm -hmm. And probably should have got out earlier, but I didn't want to get out earlier. I didn't want you to. And then in that, then that year, I, we, I knew we were going to have a good ball club coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, man, I want to go out winner. Mm -hmm. I mean, a big winner. Mm -hmm. Because we had a, a, a number one draft choice at quarterback, you know. Mm -hmm. That usually means you're going to be pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to stay one more year, but they would not let me. And uh, But, but uh, am I bitter about it? No. Uh, uh, it's, it's happened, and I'm through. I'm retired. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying myself. It's given me more time mm -hmm. to go out and speak to other FCA, mm -hmm. churches, religious organizations, you know, mm -hmm. and really maybe do a little do do something good for a while. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll confess, I wanted you to have your one more year. And I was, I was one of the advocates screaming that. But um, I'm like, he's given us so many years of his. I want him to have his year. Well, you know, you, you would think after winning two national championships, mm -hmm. 12 conference championships, mm -hmm. win 300 games at our school, which nobody's ever done except Joe Paterno won 300 at Penn State. Right. You know, winning winning. Gosh, you know we were in fourteen bowls in a row, mm -hmm. and and they wouldn't have had one more year. I was mad, but but <laughs> but, but they had a right to do that. That mm -hmm. they were the they were running the show, and they felt like I was time for me to go. So I went. You went, and I'm an, and uh, you know it it felt like I think after that we had we kind of changed into a more like a, I guess an SEC style. It, we didn't have to me at least that's just my opinion. We didn't mm -hmm. have that. That flash and that fire and the, you know the punt rooskies and oh, the, yeah. all the fun years that oh, we yeah. had. <laughs> and, but you know now we have a new coach. We have Coach Taggart. Yep. And I know you've met with him and you attended practice. Was it last week? Yeah. Okay. Sure and did. how did that feel to be back there? It felt good. Mm -hmm. uh, but to to see people I hadn't seen in a long time, mm -hmm. I, I purposely did not want to hang around the football department mm -hmm. because I never f felt like it was good. I uh, had that happen to me one time where a coach before me was real successful. Mm -hmm. I took his job. Mm -hmm. And every time I'd play a game and see if I got beat, it's always, why don't you do it like him? Why don't you do what he did? <laughs> I got so tired of hearing that, it caused bad feelings. Mm -hmm. You know what? And I said, I'm not going to let that happen to Jimbo. Mm -hmm. So I definitely stayed away. Well, now he's gone. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like I can kind of get back involved again because you got a different. Uh, coach there. Yeah, and, see, and it seems like Coach Taggart wants you involved. You know? Well, that's true. He, he has been so doggone. He's really reached out to me. Mm -hmm. He came over here and sat right where you are for about an hour and a half one day and we shot the bull. Uh -huh. He and uh, Coach uh, o Odell mm -hmm. came out with him. Mm -hmm. and uh, invited me, wanted me at the school. I said, well, I, I don't want to be looking over your shoulder. He said, I want you looking over my shoulder. So he's done, every, he's done everything he could to bring people back to the program, mm -hmm. and, and he is doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very encouraged on what I have seen. You know what? He's got a great personality. Uh, he's a good man, mm -hmm. and uh, he loves Florida State. Mm -hmm. So what else can we ask? Yeah, that, and that's pretty much what we've all seen too. And you know, not and now many of our older players are coming back to show support now too, like Deion Sanders and people that have kind of felt. They, I think they felt the way I did too. Kind of, you know, it wasn't you anymore, and I yeah. wasn't happy with the way things happened, and so I kind of shied away. But now they're kind of, you know, coming back and yeah. supporting. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel that your guys are coming back to the program now to help support the ones you coached? Well, I'm I'm happy. I love mm -hmm. to see them. I, I, like when I visited the school to the practice, that's the first practice I've watched in in eight years. Mm -hmm. You know what? And to have boys come up that used to play for us and the manners that come up that were there when I was there and the team doctor and all. I mean, it's, it's a good feeling. You know what? And uh, made you feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Well, did you get to talk to the players at practice? And if you did, what did you say to yeah, them? Yeah, he asked me to speak to the team, and mm -hmm. I did, and just – Told them I was good to be back. I wished them luck. And I'd be watching them. Mm -hmm. I said, I probably won't be to the game. I said, I don't want to go to games. I don't want to get in the parking. Yeah. I don't want to get in the traffic. <laughs> and, I, and I go up there and sit, and everybody mm -hmm. has those autographs or pictures. Mm -hmm. I can't even watch it all one game. Yeah. And so uh, I told them, I explained, I'll be pulling for you. I said, I read everything I can about you. I watch everything on television. And I told them that, that to to do what coach said coach uh, said mm -hmm. because he knows his stuff and I said he'll be just like a daddy to you mm -hmm. and, it's, and that is the way it is too mm -hmm. I played 
I go to Birmingham every summer. Mm -hmm. It's the, first, the second week of June. We play a golf tournament every 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 June, mm -hmm. in 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 favor of our high school coach, mm -hmm. who we had 65, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's how much a coach influences a boy. Mm -hmm. You know what? Other than their daddy, mm -hmm. he's if he's a good coach, they'll they'll look to him next. You know what? Mm -hmm. And so I. I, I I told him, I said, Will is that guy right now. You know what? Y'all got to follow him. And they will. He's he's easy to follow. Mm -hmm. There'd be some coaches, you know, I don't want to follow yeah. <laughs> him. But he, he'll be easy to follow. Yeah, I think you will too. I really do. He is, um, you know, what, I mean, what are your thoughts about him? And like, and what do you think the future of the program might be? Because I just see him. I think he, he seems to me like he's trying to incorporate a lot of the old. He's doing the end zones for the spring game, like the 80s. And he's got the spirit spear coming back that we were used to. Trying to do things kind of like back when you were there. Yeah. Uh, so do you think the future for the program looks good? You know, he, he approaches it like I would approach it. Mm. Now, let, let's say I went into Florida State as a new head coach. Mm -hmm. And the coach before me was very successful mm -hmm. I would try to copy him mm -hmm. you know I try to just continue his success mm -hmm. uh, but some coaches are not that way mm -hmm. they go into a new job and they try to get get rid of anything that reminds people of the last coach mm -hmm. they want it for me you know mm -hmm. and uh, but but I think he's 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 handling he's approached it like I would approach it mm -hmm. you know and and that's to get it like it was when it was so successful, mm -hmm. you know, where we were up every year we were up there. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I see that. And it reminds me, it reminds me of when you were there. And mm -hmm. I think that's what I love the most. So are you, so you're not gonna be able to make it to the spring game then? Oh, I'll be there. I've got to go that more or I'm, I'm having a signing mm -hmm. Saturday mm -hmm. from 11 till one, mm -hmm. uh, guy more at, uh, uh, Garnet and Gold Shop, mm -hmm. wherever wherever it is. Yeah, we're gonna sign. We're gonna. I'm gonna sign autographs for two hours. Okay. Then uh, Odell is, is getting into that uh, uh, that group at, at night. I'm gonna go go to that. Mm -hmm. Then I'll I'll probably go to the game, but I won't I won't stay because I can't I can't stand up all day long. Okay. Ain't no sense going up my stands. I'll be okay. talking all the time. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> but I but I I will be at the game. At mm -hmm. the first of it. Okay, got you. Well, and now, now that you're retired, tell me what you do. Tell me what. Tell me what life's like now. Well, I play golf once a week mm -hmm. on Saturday, <laughs> but I live on a golf course. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in town, like today, mm -hmm. I go out in the morning and hit balls, and 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 go get them. Mm -hmm. That's the only exercise I get. Mm -hmm. I'm 88 now. I don't care nothing about walking around that dead gum block. Or, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm too old to run, you know, but I can hit a ball and go get it, you know. So that's what I do half the day. Uh -huh. Then I come home and then Ann and I, Ann and I eat, it's funny, Ann and I eat supper. In fact, you, you're taking up my supper time right now. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, that's okay. No, we, we eat supper around two or, two or three in the afternoon, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And that's, then we don't eat, we don't eat at night. Mm -hmm. So we, we eat two meals a day. Try to hold our weight. Try to hold our weight down. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so anyway, we do that, and then uh, at night watch television. I go. I go to bed at six, mm -hmm. but I get up at four. There you go. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, and I read my Bible. Mm -hmm. I study the Bible. Yes. You know it. And um, uh, so anyway, that's that's kind of way my day. Then then I speak a lot. Yes. See, last night I was in uh, Live Oak. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday, uh, Sunday I was in Morgantown, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Spoke up there, mm -hmm. and three or four days ago I was down in Melbourne. So I, I, I speak nearly once or twice a week, you know. And what are what, what are when you go and speak? I know like a lot of churches and places like that. What what do you tell? You said you like to speak to youth. What do you tell them? What is your message to them about Christ? Oh well, I, I try to witness to them. I try to witness to them. I try to tell them why I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. and I always back it up by saying, "I ain't no better than nobody else." You know, when you when you say you're a Christian, I don't mean you're good. I mean you tr you try to be good, mm -hmm. but nobody's good. The Bible says nobody's good, mm -hmm. but good means perfect, and nobody is perfect. You know mm -hmm. what? But I'm still a Christian. Yeah. You know, because that's what I choose, mm -hmm. and I accepted Christ as my Savior. And so when I go out and talk to churches or FCA, I try to witness to them. Mm -hmm. They know that I was successful in my career. Mm -hmm. Now I won't tell them why. Mm -hmm. You know, and number one, I put God first, you know, and he directed my life. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the message I try to try to get across. But I always tell them, I ain't no wetter nobody else. Mm-hmm. I, I've made mistakes just like everybody else, mm-hmm. but I have been forgiven. I love that. I love that. Well, Coach, I can't tell you how wonderful it has been to talk to you and just to get to meet you after all these years. I was so little last time I saw you. So yeah. um, I'm just, I'm I'm thankful. I'm excited about the program now. I'm excited about, um, you know, uh, Coach Taggart and, and his style of, oh, I am of too. bringing you back in. It just, yeah. It's so wonderful. Yeah, I am too. I, I'm just really encouraged what I have seen. Mm-hmm. I know everybody wonders, you know, well, what's the new coach going to be like? All I know is that I've watched him pretty closely. Mm-hmm. I see no flaws yet. Mm-hmm. I, I don't expect to see any. Mm-hmm. You know. Now we still you got to win ball games. Yes, you got to win ball games. Mm-hmm. You know it. And he, but, but I, I really think I, I, the way he's recruiting, he'll win ball games. Win ball games. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yep. I'm so thankful to you for taking your time to talk with us today. I really appreciate it. Good. All right. You only five minutes. I know. <laughs> and supper. You missed your supper. <laughs> <laughs> We're fixing to go take care of that. Okay, I got We're you. fixing to take care of that. I got you. Well, thank you, Coach. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you for All coming. Right. Okay, thanks. All right.